I'm cautiously optimistic as well. I talked to the chairman of the committee last night in terms of getting an agreement that the president will sign, that both sides agreed to. They had the experts in yesterday about border security and focused on the fact that the experts say you need three things. You need manpower, boots on the ground, you need technology, and you need a physical barrier, whatever you want to call it. And not the entire 2,000 miles of, of the border, but there are specific areas, 10 identified areas, where they believe a border barrier of some sort is critical. Do you think immigration will be separated from this in, in, in terms of, for instance, amnesty for DACA? I mean, what was striking in the State of the Union address is that President Trump departed from the script a little bit when he talked about immigration and his desire to see immigrants come into this country. And he ad-libbed in the largest numbers ever. And then he was asked about that afterward and said, did you actually mean that ad-lib remark in the greatest numbers ever? And he said, yes, he wants people to come in legally. Let's make sure we say that legally because unemployment is so low. We need the workers in this, in this country. So is that a separate discussion at this point? Well, I think at this point it is. The president, I think, has been very flexible on this and the offer that he did before uh, reopening the government, talking about these young people who were brought to this country through no fault of their own. Uh, that was something that he offered in working to find solutions to secure the border as well as dealing with these young people and giving them additional opportunities in this country with a legal status, depending on how exactly you wanted to work through that process. So that, I think, is going to be a separate discussion at this point. But I have a lot of confidence in the 17 members of this committee. They're known negotiators. They know how to get a deal done. They're members of the Appropriations Committee, have done this before. They can come up with something, I believe, successfully. And then the other point you made is, will the president sign it? And that's a decision he's going to make. You know, I would say follow Ronald Reagan's approach, which is, if you don't get the whole life loaf, take it a slice at a time and then go back and get more. The president will have additional opportunities if he doesn't get the full funding mo money he's asking for now, there's a lot of work that needs to be done at the border to make sure it's secure Senator, for though, our but, but I think you're keying in on the, the central issue. It's very possible uh, that your, your, your colleagues and peers could come up with a deal, hand it to the president, and the president could say, I can't do this. And what, what's, what's the chance that happens? And, and what do you do if that's the case? Well, my recommendation is that he accept what they come up with in a bipartisan way and then do the additional commitment that he has talked about. The president is committed to making sure the border is secure. If he has to repurpose other money, there are ways that he can do that. The president has talked about using emergency measures. I would rather he not do it. Would I'd you rather support, it come through the legislative that if that the process. If he, if he were to look at whatever the senators come back to him with and he says, look, th this deal does, doesn't cover what I want, the only way to get what I want is, is to use is, is to declare a national emergency. Uh, what, 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 what would be your position if you were to do that? Well, number one is I would recommend he sign what is what is agreed to because that opens up and commits the funding for the other seven appropriations bills through the end of the fiscal year. So I think we need to avoid another shutdown. I think nothing good comes from a shutdown at all. I've sponsored legislation to permanently prevent additional shutdowns of the government. And there's a group that want to move in that direction. I'm certainly one of those that's been very involved. I think if the president doesn't get everything he wants, he ought to take everything that, that is agreed to and then say, all right, I still need additional revenue. And how do we do that? Do they repurpose, as they say, money that's already been approved for other projects and do that? Or does he go the emergency route, which will be challenged? It'll be challenged in the House by Nancy Pelosi. If it passes there, then goes to the Senate and then goes to his desk where he will likely veto it. And then you get into the issues of veto overrides. That's Sen not the way to go. What we need to do is focused specifically on getting a legislative solution. S Senator, the way you're framing this uh, is largely that the president's kind of got to take whatever is offered uh, to him or, or else the fallout will be much worse for him uh, than his opponents. Do, do you think he is weakened when it comes to negotiating compared to perhaps how he was a couple of months ago? And does that have implications for the other big negotiation going on at the moment, which is with China? Uh, no, I don't think the president has weakened at all. The president has been resolute in what his commitment is. You have a group working together for a legislative uh, solution. In terms of the president dealing in China, overseas activities, I mean, th I think the president is very strong in all of those. You see the head of NATO who was here, uh, and I visited with him last week, say NATO put another $100 billion into funding of 
defense and military. Why? Because of President Trump's insistence that they do it. So, no, I think the president is showing significant strength overseas.